Hobby Farm Guys here, welcoming you back to another episode. I'm Steve. I'm Brian. And running the show behind the scenes is Eric. Howdy. Today, building a first aid kit for your animals. What you need to know. Coming right up. Many hobby farms include animals. Whether it's just a few chickens, or maybe you've added a couple of pigs and a dairy goat, or maybe you've got an entire zoo. Whatever you have, chances are, at some point, one of them's gonna get sick or injured. So what do you do? Veterinarians are trained to handle just such a predicament, but that comes at a cost. I have kids, take them to the doctor plenty, even the emergency room, but I don't pack them up and haul them down there for every time they have a skin, knee, or a runny nose, right? I keep some basic supplies at home to deal with those issues. It's the same with animals. There may be times when you call upon a professional, but there are lots of things you can take care of yourself. So today, we're gonna to go over what you need to build a first aid kit for your animals so that you can take care of many of those issues yourself. Now, one of the most important and often overlooked supplies in a first aid kit is paperwork. Starting with your veterinarian's contact information, you may quickly discover that the problem is above your skill level and having the number handy will be a big benefit at that moment. This is also a good place to keep a copy of immunization or health records, information that will likely be asked for uh, if you need to call for help. Also, for whatever species of animal you happen to have, knowing the vital signs for that species is extremely helpful when evaluating an animal in an emergency situation. Prepare a card with normal ranges for reference. Knowing what normal heart rate, respiration rate, and temperature ranges are will be useful for comparison when you're checking an ailing animal. Store all the paperwork in a Ziploc bag to keep it together and avoid making a mess of it. Another good thing to keep in your kit is a notebook and pencil. Use it to record those temperatures or medication doses and times, the size of wounds or abscesses, and just general observations. It eliminates error and guesswork, and you'll be surprised how easily you're going to forget these details during a stressful situation. Yeah. The next thing to include in your kit is a collection of basic medical implements and tools. While certain animals may have additional tools specific to them, a general all-around list should include a sharp pair of scissors, a pocket knife, tweezers, a disposable razor, needle nose pliers, wire cutters, a stethoscope, a flashlight, and a good rectal thermometer. You won't use the pliers, wire cutters, or flashlight in treating any injury per se, but you'll find them invaluable when an animal is tangled in wire or during the middle of the night. The thermometer is one of the most useful pieces of equipment you have, so get a good one. Tie a string around one end and then tie the other end of the string to a clothespin, which is attached to the animal's tail to prevent accidentally losing that thermometer. So look for a veterinary rectal thermometer. Right. Now, in addition to the tools, uh, you're going to want to have plenty of consumables in your kit. Disposable gloves, towels, and rags are going to prove invaluable at maintaining cleanliness and are also helpful for covering an open wound or being used to staunch bleeding. A supply of gauze is a must and a quick clot style bandage may save the life of an animal that has received a serious wound. Petroleum jelly also has many uses and a supply of saline solution is handy for washing out and irrigating a wound. A squeezable bottle and some needleless syringes work well to direct the saline solution where it's needed. You also want to have plenty of vet wrap to hold dressings in place. And finally, a large blanket can provide a clean surface or be used to cover an animal in shock. Other consumables you'll want to ensure you have ready access to in your kit include solutions to clean, sterilize, and fight infection. Iodine, isopropyl alcohol, and hydrogen peroxide each have their uses. Neosporin is a must, and some Q-tips will come in really handy. I also would absolutely recommend having some sort of spray-on wound cleaner or antibacterial spray. Lots of options here. Uh, Cetrogen, Betadine, Banix, Blue Coat, they're all examples of cleaning rinses or antibacterial sprays that are commonly available at many local farm stores. Make sure you read the label. Some sprays contain ingredients that require a waiting period prior to milking or butchering an animal. For minor cuts, cornstarch actually works extremely well at protecting the wound and keeping flies out, thereby allowing that wound to heal. Now, next to cuts, scrapes, and bruises, probably the most common ailment will be related to something the animal ate. Now, whether it's foamy bloat from too rich pasture or poisoning from toxic plants, these can be the scariest situations as you may not understand fully what's going on. Activated charcoal is used in poisonings to prevent toxins from spreading, 
but should be administered under the direction of a veterinarian. If you keep ruminants susceptible to bloat, you should stock an appropriate anti-bloat treatment. Generally, electrolytes and immune boosters, like NutriDrench, are great to keep on hand for lethargic animals, although you shouldn't administer them without checking with a veterinarian or expert first. Keeping some supplements like this on hand can help you avoid a trip to the vet for an animal that's a little bit under the weather. Sometimes it's all that's needed to perk up an ailing animal. That's right. Finally, it's not a bad idea to keep some basic medications around for your livestock. Exactly what medications you keep uh, will depend upon what animals you keep. Some, like Dervet Penicillin Injectable and Ivermectin Injectable 1%, are available over the counter, while others are going to require uh, that you get a prescription from your veterinarian. Generally, a discussion with your veterinarian will identify what medicines you may need to stock and have on hand. One thing you don't have to ask your vet about, your animal's favorite treat. Keep some of those around. Having some of your animal's favorite treat on hand may help you catch a wounded or scared animal. Now, having an injured or sick animal can be a stressful time, both for the animal and for you. So by preparing ahead of time and having a livestock first aid kit at the ready, you can reduce those stress levels for both you and the animal. Now, if there's something you consider essential that we didn't mention, let us know in the comments below. And until next time, Keep on hobby farming.